Good afternoon, sir. A very good afternoon indeed to you as well. Sir, even after the discussion on tragic hero, we are a little bit unclear about the position of Aristotle regards with the status and identity of tragic hero. So, could you please explain it? Oh, I think you mean that his definition of the status of the tragic hero as neither too preeminently virtuous nor thoroughly depraved, but a middling sort who by some native weakness in, in him or her commits an error uh, and, and, and that ultimately fetches him her the tragic doom. Is it not so? Yeah. Huh. The tragic hero uh, is neither uh, an outright saint nor a, a, a utterly hopeless wicked criminal. The tragic hero is a representative of the normal human beings in its emotive capacity. But the tragic hero, in order to attract our notice, practices and goes past us in his exploits. There he becomes or, or tries to become superhuman, whereby all the trouble. Meaning, he must be rather on the side of good. This is my native gut feeling that he is good, but not blemishless good. He, through his hubris, Hubris is an Aristotelian term which means, you know, excess of ego, insolence or self-assertion, self-confidence. It has many nuances. Out of that excess of self-confidence, he comes to commit something which is ultimately the instrument for his downfall. But the tragic hero must be having in him or her much that is admirable. Otherwise, he, she doesn't qualify for being the protagonist of a... Why should we watch him or her at the downfall? And how, how are we to identify ourselves with him or her suffering? Because if she or he is a thief, we outright dismiss it. Aristotle spoke of that. If he, she is a saint, we come to revere him. His suffering is not our suffering. So he is us and not us. He is us in his responsiveness, in his struggle, in his, you know, in his trepidations of heart. But he is also not us in his uh, getting ahead of us like Agamemnon going too far like Antigone going too far like Oedipus committing something which we don't usually or shouldn't commit so that's how he's a middling sort thanks for your such a nice explanation um, sir I find the term Hamarthia used by Aristotle oh, right. uh, rather elusive so does it mean error of judgment only or it more flexible in its nature? Or is it more flexible? Yes, sir. Uh, you are, your your uh, question contains, thankfully, the clue to the answer. Yes, uh, Aristotle, uh, when he uses the word hamartia, in English we sometimes, you know, pronounce it hamartia or hamashia, whatever. Uh, he definitely points to that what I was referring to as the native inbuilt weakness. As a human being, we are all open to weaknesses. We are not infallible. So the tragic hero, in spite of his towering stature, because of his uh, self-confidence or something, commits a human error. Call it by the name error or miscalculation or a technical mistake or a moral maladjustment whatever. So there the flexibility is given. Ultimately it issues in an error in terms of judgment. He commits, he, she commits something which he, she better had not committed. So there is a wide berth given by Aristotle himself in this. It can be a moral, uh, uh, moral error reprehensible. It can be an, an error issuing out of ignorance as in the case of Oedipus not, that, not knowing that he was marrying his mother or killed his father unknowingly. It can be an inevitable uh, um, um, duty at odds with the person in Antigone for example. So Aristotle helps it. Error of judgment meaning where uh, the tragic hero takes a decision which fouls up the pitch for him or her for the rest of the career. Thank you, sir.